Hey friends, this is Michael Bohm with Youth Apologetics Training. Today we're going to start a new series. We're going to be talking about the New Apostolic Reformation. Uh, and as many of you know already, I have a history uh, of being a part of th the more hyper-charismatic church-type movement. That's where I got saved. That's where all this started for me. And uh, I was part of a church that actually subscribed. Uh, at, the, at the time I was part of this church, I didn't realize it, but we subscribed to many uh, of the New Apostolic Reformation type theology, the different teachings that you find in this movement. And so I have a background in a lot of this, uh, well, friends, uh, I'm going to say it, uh, for lack of a better word, craziness. There's a lot of nonsense that goes on in these circles. The New Apostolic Reformation is very much affiliated with your word of faith movements, your hyper charismatic churches, but its reach goes far beyond that. Uh, as you're going to see later in this series, this New Apostolic Reformation is budding up to and uh, working alongside many politicians and uh, many influential characters within our society. Let's just put it that way. And this movement is dangerous. It is not a denomination, okay? It does not have an official theology, all right? It is uh, a network of, here comes the air quotes, apostles and prophets, uh, men and women who lead various parts of this network, okay? Again, it's, it's not an actual, uh, I don't know, formal entity. You can't send in your dues and get a card and have your own new apostolic Reformation uh, members card. <laughs> okay, it is a network of these self-proclaimed apostles and prophets. God did not set them up, as you will see as we go forward. Uh, these men and women are false prophets, false apostles. Uh, they were not set up by Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ did not send them out. Now, when you look at these characters, you're going to find that uh, as far as the essentials of the Christian faith, for the most part, they hold true, okay? So they do believe that Jesus is God, okay? He was born of a virgin. Uh, the gospel, salvation by grace through faith, it's not a result of works, okay? So they generally subscribe to all of the essentials of the faith, but then things get wonky. They get wacky. They get out of control. And by the way, I will do my best to not get out of control myself in this series as this stuff, like I mentioned earlier, it really strikes home for me. All right. I, I find like, for example, in my Todd Bentley in my word of faith series, uh, I got a little excited. <laughs> I got a little angry. I couldn't help it. I'm going to do my best to keep a lid on it, but I can't help but get angry at a lot of this stuff because it is nonsense. It is craziness. It makes Christians look like doofuses, like a bunch of flakes. Okay. Uh, it's embarrassing. It's an embarrassment to Christianity. It's also leading people astray. All right. It's hurting people. Uh, for example, in this series, you're going to hear that, uh, well, if you've got a leader who's claiming to have one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations with Jesus and God the Father and the Holy Spirit told me this and the Holy Spirit told me that and thus saith the Lord and an angel came and visited me yesterday and we sat down and had a cup of coffee and this is what the angel told me and I talked to a talking eagle the other day while I was standing on a mountain all you people out there who have read Rick Joyner and know what I'm talking about um, when you are submitting yourself to these types of people, uh, covering theology starts coming into play. Uh, you, you have people who claim that they are getting words from the Lord, and now if you don't uh, subscribe, or you don't believe what they're saying, or worse yet, you have the gall to challenge their claims to these prophetic words, now you're working for the devil. All right, and I've experienced this firsthand uh, as we started falling out with some of the beliefs in this hyper-charismatic church. 
uh, people started looking at me like I was working for Satan and I was falling away from the Lord. Many of you out there know exactly what I'm talking about. Many of you are going through that right now. I, I've been in contact with tons of you out there who are going through this very thing right now. You are a, a heretic. Okay, You have fallen away from the faith. You're not spiritual. You don't have the Holy Spirit. All right, And, and maybe you're just not getting healed because there are sins in your life and you don't have the faith. All these goofy things that are taught. Well, covering theology comes into this, uh, well, hand in glove, because if your pastor claims to be hearing from the Lord and you're not buying it, well, now there's something wrong with you. Now you're following Satan. This is what Rick Joyner has to say about those who dissent, those who disagree. Uh, Rick Joyner says this, and again, he is the, he's a, an author, he is a, oh boy, I believe he claims to be a, an apostle, okay? Um, and he's author of books like The Call, The Quest, and so many more. Uh, his ministry is called Morningstar Ministries. Oh, I've got a pretty extensive history with this guy. I've read so many of his books. I have no idea where any of them are anymore. I've, I've probably burned them or thrown them away, but uh, anyway... This is what Rick Joyner says of people like me and you who are concerned about theology and who actually want to know what the Word of God is, and we want to test all things and hold fast to that which is good, right? We want to prove all things. We don't just buy into any old word coming from a guy who says he's a prophet. And they say that, and he says this, some pastors and leaders who continue to resist this tide of unity will be removed from their place. Some will become so hardened that they will become opposers and risk resist God to the end. Did you notice he mentioned tide of unity? Uh, sorry, I'm kind of interrupting myself here, but uh, there is an element of ecumenicalism in this movement as well, but we'll get to that later. And moving on. Some that were used greatly of God in the past have become too rigid in doctrinal emphasis. Boy, think on that one for a second. Was Paul too rigid in doctrinal emphasis? Was Jesus too rigid in doctrinal emphasis? Or maybe was Jesus and Paul and Peter and James and and all these others who took part in uh, formulating these doctrines that we find in the Bible, and I maybe I shouldn't have said it that way, uh, receiving from God these doctrines and putting them down in the Word of God. Were they fast and loose with doctrine? Were they concerned about doctrine? And so going on here, some leaders will actually disband their organizations as they realize they are no longer relevant to what God is doing. This harvest will be so great that no one will look back to the early church as a standard. Those who have become vessels for this spirit and do not repent will be displayed as so insane that even the most immature Christians will quish, quickly discern their sickness. The source of witchcraft against us may not be the obvious satanic cults or New Age operatives. It can come from well-meaning, though deceived, Christians who are praying against us instead of for us. And so now we see that Rick Joyner, you know, if somebody like me prays and says, God, please show them the truth, and God, please stop what they're, you know, stop what they're doing there. It's leading people astray. It's hurting people. Now we are, well, we're participating in witchcraft and we're working for Satan. Now this is a big deal. In this series, friends, let me get this out before I run out of time. Uh, we're going to cover a great many things and it's going to be a shotgun blast approach. Okay. It's going to be scattering all over the place. And I'm not going to get too in-depth on all these issues, but I am going to touch on them and tell you what they are and, and give you some examples of them and get a little in-depth, but not too in-depth. I think I'm going to devote a many of these subjects, entire series in the future to really looking closely at these different things. But we're going to look at dominionism. What's that? We'll look at strategic level spiritual warfare. 
or SLSW. Uh, we're going to look at prayer mapping, uh, the fivefold ministry, uh, the seven mountain mandate. What is that? We'll look at warfare, warfare prayer, uh, and warfare worship. I know some of you are all nodding your head vigorously because you know exactly what this stuff is. I've taken part in pretty much all of it, although most of it uh, didn't go by these names in the circles I walked in. It, it's all the same stuff. Uh, identificational repentance. Uh, we'll look at uh, the big wealth transfer that new, the New Apostolic Reformation teaches about. Then in the last days, there will be this huge wealth transfer into their hands. Now, there is something scriptural about that, but we'll look at what they believe and what the Bible says. Um, we'll look at the who is the manifest sons of God. Uh, what about Joel's army, Omega children, and, well, the many other different names they like to give themselves. We'll look at uh, contemplative prayer or breath prayers and how that plays a role in this movement. We'll, and then we'll look at scriptures that they use to support uh, their beliefs. All right. And again, there is no set of official beliefs in this movement, although you're going to find that uh, throughout the the uh, core members of this movement, you're going to find all these teachings in common. Uh, and so we'll look at some of the scriptures they use to support their claims. And then we're going to look at what the Bible actually says. And of course, how we can talk to these people. Uh, to many of you, this is going to be a pretty bizarre series. Because you're going to hear about a lot of stuff going on in Christianity you didn't even know was happening. And others of you, you're neck deep in this stuff, and you have no idea how to relate to these people or how to get out. Uh, it's a scary situation, and it gets really messy. If you have a leader who claims to be an apostle or a prophet, and they're claiming to hear words from God, okay? In other words, they are claiming uh, the thus saith the Lord type statements, okay? How do you test that? How do you prove that out? Do you just blindly accept that? Is the canon of Scripture open? Is God even talking to people nowadays? If somebody comes to you and says God has a word for you, how do you test them out? How do you even know that what they're saying is from God or not? My old pastor used to say things like this, A man with an argument is no match for a man with an experience. All right. So, in other words, it's very difficult to talk to these people when they say, well, God told me this. I know it's true because God told me. Joseph Smith was kneeling down in the woods, trusting what he read in the book of James, that if he asks God for wisdom, God will give it to him. And suddenly, God the Father shows up, and Joseph Smith is asking, what is the most correct of all religions? And God says, none of them are, allegedly God said. And then, of course, Joseph Smith goes on to start the Mormon faith, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We have Catholics who have their popes, uh, apostolic succession, going all the way back to Peter, supposedly. And these popes can speak ex cathedra from the chair, and they will give us words from the Lord. How do we know? It's from the Lord. How do we test that? I was talking to a, a well-meaning and good guy, but he's a Catholic recently. And he's talking about tradition. I had somebody send me a uh, message on sermon audio about Catholicism and how I was wrong and how the early church, uh, the whole Bible was built on tradition. All right, how do we test that? How do we know what these prophets are saying is from God or from somebody else? Neil Donald Walsh, in his book, Conversations with God. All right, the whole book uh, claims to be conversations with God. Uh, how do we know that? How do we know that he was actually talking to God or something else? Do we test it with Scripture? What about the apostles? What about the prophets in uh, Old Testament and New Testament times? How did we know they were from God? When Paul, who claims that God knocked him to the ground and caused him to be blind, and you know Jesus himself spoke to him, 
he had this great vision, if you will, this encounter with the risen Christ. How do we test that? How do we know Paul was actually an apostle appointed by Christ himself? Now, in this new apostolic reformation, like I said, these guys have, many of these prophets hold true to the essentials of the faith. But then they start claiming extra biblical visions and prophecies. How do we know that what they are saying is true or false? How can we test that? Join me as we explore the beliefs of the New Apostolic Reformation. This is going to be a fun series, an interesting series, uh, a series that has been requested by many of you out there wanting to know more about this movement. And some of you are pretty intimate with this movement and want to hear my take on it because you smell a rat and you're trying to figure out how to get out of this mess. And friends, this is a mess. This is a very dangerous movement, and it is, it is huge. It is ginormous, and that is really a word. <laughs> it, its tentacles, its roots reach into many areas of Christianity that are not necessarily subscribing to these new apostolic Reformation teachings. I, I kid you not, friends, this movement, can, you can just about find one of its roots tapped into almost every church in this country. If you look hard enough, uh, even... Rick Warren is affiliated with this movement in some ways. Uh, he was trained, uh, mentored by one of the movement's founders, C. Peter Wagner. And we'll get into that a little bit more, too. This uh, movement has made its way into our politics, into our media, and uh, what it aims to do, this movement, and dominionism. You've heard me talk about dominionism in the past, this Belief that Christianity is going to take dominion of the earth before Christ comes. In fact, Christ can't come back until we Christians take control of the governments of the world and start a new order, a new order of Christians. By the way, uh, one of the, the movements that birthed this movement was the Latter Rain movement, a little trivial factoid for you is that the full name of the latter rain movement is the new order of the latter rain i don't know when you start using new order in your name that makes me a little bit nervous <laughs> uh yeah this is a very dangerous movement and we're going to look at their beliefs we're going to be critical of their beliefs and we're going to look at what the bible says about their beliefs all right so uh I'm going to stop right there, friends. If you like these types of podcasts, if you like learning about, uh, well, heresy in the church, uh, cults, cult research, occult, uh, creation, evolution, uh, and just worldviews in general, uh, on my website, youthapologeticstraining.com, go out there and click on the podcast archive link. I have over 400 episodes on various worldview type topics uh, and it's all free. It's all there for you guys. So check it out. Go out there and download some stuff. And uh, let's get equipped. Let's learn more about our faith and how we can engage these people and lead them out of error and lead them into the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, with that, friends, I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>